in this lecture we will see how to solve economic dispatch problem when generator limits are considered in the previous lecture we have seen that we have solved uh, the problem where both losses as well as generator limits were excluded or they were neglected the only constraint that we consider that we had considered in the previous problem was the equality constraint now coming to this particular uh, section here we will be considering both equality as well as inequality uh, constraints the procedure is uh, slight uh, it is same with slight modification so you can consider first we will consider there are n units with each uh, unit having operating cost as a quadratic function of the respective power output and now each unit will have certain minimum and maximum limit okay if there are n units so all the n units will have a minimum limit and maximum limit so uh, if this i consider as an inequality constraint so since there are n units there are total n inequality constraint in this particular problem now now according to our economic dispatch problem that we had seen in the previous section so the main objective function is this ft value so this is our goal is to minimize this particular ft function which are sub subjected to these constraints the first one is the equality constraint where the power demand is equal to sum of all the power output of n generating units and each unit will have certain minimum and maximum limit so this becomes your inequality constraint this becomes your equality constraint so the total number of constraint here will be equal to n plus 1 okay so uh, the first thing that we do here is the same procedure that we had followed we'll follow it here so first for these data we'll calculate the lambda value okay now uh, using the for this particular formula we'll calculate the lambda value so once we have calculated the lambda value for each generating unit we'll calculate the output generation that is pgi so this particular value will be calculated for each generating unit so this we have seen how to do in the previous section um, we have seen how to calculate lambda value and how we will calculate pgi so all this part has been seen now coming to this particular section the next step is we will check how many units are violating its limit okay so if there are n generating units so we'll see if all the pgi that we have calculated using this particular formula are they within this particular limit or not that we will check okay if they are within their limit fine if they are not now comes the actual work so we'll consider that a unit j some unit j it is violating its limit okay now violation of limits can be two types one uh, the pg uh, j that is for uh, this particular value this can be uh, this can be less than the minimum limit or it can be greater than the maximum limit so there are two ways of uh, violating the limit either the generating uh, the scheduled generation can go below the minimum limit or it can go beyond the maximum limit so now you have two conditions again so if it is below the minimum limit then we will peg this value or we will fix this value to minimum generation okay so we will fix this particular for jt unit we'll fix the economic uh, or scheduled generation as minimum value okay so if i say uh, one particular generator is having uh, a limit around 5200 megawatt and once we have calculated the pgi using this particular value we get around uh, 20 megawatt so it means that your generation of that particular generating unit is below 50 megawatt so we will fix the generation of that particular unit to 50 megawatts so the same thing so if it is below that particular minimum limit then we will peg that particular generator unit to minimum value if in case the value that we have calculated is above the maximum limit then we will peg that particular value at maximum uh, limit whatever we have so if you have around 5200 megawatt and value we, you get is around 150 megawatt then we will fix for uh, will fix the generation of that particular jt unit 
to 100 megawatt so here now any unit which is violating its limit we will fix the generation of that unit to either its minimum value or maximum value okay now once we have done that the next thing is we will repeat from step 1 that is from this step but we will exclude unit j for example you have four generating units you have finished till uh, step number 2 and in step number 3 you see that one generating unit that is unit number 3 is violating its limit then you will go to uh, you will fix the generation of that unit number 3 to either its minimum value or maximum value and then you'll come to step 4 you will calculate the new value of lambda excluding the unit 3 so if there are four i mean as i have told you there were four units one unit is excluded uh, is beyond its limit you have fixed the value of that particular unit now you will calculate the lambda value for only three units so the new value of lambda will be calculated for all the units except that unit which has violated its limit so excluding those unit you will calculate the new lambda value and the corresponding values of pgi will be calculated so like uh, initially you started with four units you find that one unit is excluding is beyond its limit you fix that value now you calculate the same procedure will be calculated excluding that uh, unit which you have fixed the value so for new number of uh, generating units you will calculate the lambda value now this lambda value we call it as new lambda and the new values of pgi will be calculated okay so this is the procedure we follow so once we have finished the calculation of lambda new there are certain conditions that have to be satisfied now that condition we call it as kun tucker conditions okay now all the uh, units should for satisfy this particular condition which ensures that the whatever scheduling we have done it for it is economically viable okay so the first thing those units which have not violated their limits for those units the incremental cost should be equal to the new value that we have calculated like out of 5 units you have 4 units which have not violated their limits for those 4 units their incremental cost should be equal and it should be equal to the new value of lambda that we have calculated now for those units which have violated their limits if you have fixed the generation to maximum value then the incremental cost of that particular unit should be less than or equal to the new lambda value and for those units where the generation is scheduled to minimum value for that particular unit the incremental cost should be greater than or equal to the new lambda value so if i say the new lambda value is around so this particular new lambda value is around 10 fine sorry okay this new lambda value is around 10 now uh, out of four generating units three generating units have not violated any limits so for those three generating units this incremental cost value whatever we have calculated that will be equal okay and it will be equal to 10 now for that one particular generating unit which has violated the limit we will see for what value we have fixed that particular generation schedule if we have fixed it to its maximum limit then the incremental cost should of that particular unit that is unit uh, one which has violated the limit that should be less than 10 and if you have fixed the generation to its minimum value then the incremental cost of that particular unit should be greater than 
so these things has to be ensured this is called as contucker condition so this particular optimization problem will have addition of additional conditions that you have to check before uh, doing the economic scheduling so these conditions will be there n plus 1 constraints will be there along with that you have to also make sure that these conditions are also fulfilled clear so this is how we will solve the economic scheduling problem when generator limits are included in the next lecture we will see how uh, we will solve a problem on this particular concept thank you